Uh, well, good evening. Um, welcome to this Greater Greenwich Church of uh, Chester and Ellesmere Port. This is our Sunday night closing ceremony. Huh. Uh, no, it's just our regular Sunday night Bible study. So, uh, uh, welcome if you're joining us for the first time. Please leave us a, uh, a, a gif, uh, a like, uh, a, a comment, an emoji. Um, and uh, we will get back to you and if you are a regular listener you know the drill anyway it's good to hear from people just to know that you're able to hear us and see us clearly uh, we as you can see we're outside um, uh, coming to you live from our home uh, just to enjoy the nice weather while we can uh, so tonight we'll be looking at our theme of the day which was from Acts chapter 5 and just uh, continuing on a little bit further uh, on that theme. Uh, now, if you are around this week, um, my wife has offered for uh, a prayer time, uh, which is Tuesday morning at 8.30 at our house. Uh, so if any of the ladies are free, uh, feel free to join for that. Um, and then this week, Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, we'll have our midweek Bible study. Come and join us for that live at the church premises. Uh, it's always good to be together in the middle of the week to encourage each other and remember why, why we're doing this. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's the, the week schedule. And then uh, back to normal. And did you want to mention about the coffee time or not? Yes. Uh, so we're going to meet at 11 at Costa Coffee in Watergate Street. Costa Coffee in on Watergate Thursday. Street, 11 o'clock on Thursday. Again, uh, some of the ladies of the church will join together and just have a time of fellowship and see what else materialises. Uh, we were able to go out on outreach this afternoon. That was good. Uh, that was a blessed time. And so uh, those are the details of the week and uh, the conference with Pastor Voices Church and Pastor Matli, uh, Silvio and uh, Pastor Michal Milaya that is coming up very soon as well. Uh, contact for details if you don't know them already. Okay, so tonight let's do this, let's pray. We'll give this time to the Lord and see what happens after that. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your preservation on our lives. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Thank you for the finished work of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your grace that there is nothing that needs to be added to it. There is nothing that can be taken away from it. Thank you for your mercy that deals with the effects of our lives. Lord. And we just give you the glory for that. We praise you, Lord. Open eyes tonight, Lord. Open hearts. We pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word and for your truth. Uh, and just really guide this season now. Fill us with your spirit and anoint in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Uh, we will read from Acts chapter 5. And don't worry, it's not going to be the bit about Ananias and Sapphira. If you're a little bit scared about that, we're not doing that tonight. We're going to read the... It will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily you be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had, rec had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words tonight. Thank you, Lord, that they are a, a comfort to us, an encouragement to us, a challenge to us. And Lord, we just ask that you anoint now 
thank you for your words of life. Thank you for your power of your word. And again, Lord, we, we are nothing, we are no one. We have no words of our own. We have no counsel of our own. But we seek your heart, we seek your ways, we want your truth, we want your word, we want your power. And we seek your spirit, Lord, just fill us and anoint us tonight with your Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us in the things that are said and the things that are not said. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow, yeah. We were thinking this morning about that name of Jesus Christ and the authority that it has. That's one of the things that the, the disciples meant. They were told not to preach the name of Jesus anymore. Told by the Jewish authorities, told them that this was the wrong thing, told them that they shouldn't do it. And, um, and of course, what did they do? Um, as Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than men. I think that's in verse 29, but you can check that if you've got your Bible open. Um, but yeah, that is the heart of the Gospel. God communicates His plan to the world. Salvation is not man's plan. It's not man's idea. The church is not man's plan. It's not ours to play with, change and, and mess around with as we like. It's God's work. It is the Holy Spirit that indwells people. It is the Spirit of God that saves people from themselves. It is a uh, the challenge to our flesh. We don't like it often. We often disagree sometimes with what God wants to do, uh, but it's the power of the Lord. And actually, we cannot fight against it. And that is our thought tonight, really, that um, Gamaliel, who was the guy that was speaking there, one of the Jewish scholars who didn't believe in Jesus Christ, who was part of the Jewish tradition, and who was speaking against the apostles and you can see that they were actually beaten so he was party to that, he agreed with that, he was behind that but he warned that actually no just let these people do what they're doing and if it is of man it will come to nothing and if it is of God you cannot fight against it because you will be fighting against what God has done. And the rest is history. Because we know church history. We know that actually the church is still around today. The church of Jesus Christ is still around today. People preach the name of Jesus today. The gospel is preached in every continent, in every country. Um, tonight in Paris there will probably be some sort of closing ceremony. Uh, parade of nations from the Olympics. But actually that is nothing in comparison to what will go on uh, if you look in the book of Revelation, I think it's, it's chapter 5 where it says, actually um, I, I saw a great crowd of, of people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue. Uh, and yeah, that is what the gospel has done. It has saved people in all corners of the world people who are not allowed to, people who shouldn't, people who are told by the authorities in their country not to believe. But still, the power of God transforms lives. And once we are born again, we can do nothing about it. Uh, I remember um, seeing uh, um, a t-shirt from a, a Christian, and it said, I was born again this way. And <laughs> this is to the thing, isn't it? You know, often the people, people who argue against the gospel, use that as their excuse. I was born. That you have to make allowances for my condition, for my life choices, for my ailments, for whatever it is that I put against it. Don't witness Christ to me because I was born this way. But the truth of the matter is, we get to be born again. And Christ gives us a new life. And uh, I don't even want to begin to tell you uh, half the things that I did in the past before I was a believer. 
about how my life was before I was born again. But the point is this, that we are born again. And we are born again a completely different way from the way that actually we were before. And the old arguments, uh, it's interesting, I was in a discussion with somebody online tonight, and I realised that actually years and years ago I would have argued exactly the opposite myself, because I was coming from a natural viewpoint, from my flesh, from uh, the wisdom of this world, and what I thought was right, what, what society taught me I should think. But actually all of that went against scripture, and when I allowed the Spirit of God to challenge me in it, I realised that I had to go with what God was telling me. I couldn't fight against it, I couldn't go against it. And this is the testimony of so many thousands, millions of believers worldwide. But actually, we cannot fight against God. How many people have tried to do that? Lee Strobel, famously the journalist, set out to disprove that the Bible was a load of rubbish and ended up becoming uh, a, a biblical scholar and writing books proving that actually you cannot argue against it. It's, it is impossible, it just doesn't work. Even if you try and find the faults with it, it doesn't actually bear up to this scrutiny. It's like, it's too clear, it's too real. Uh, Josh McDowell, someone else who did the same thing, college student, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm at, at the top of my uh, intellectual prowess and I will destroy Christianity. As we said this morning, Voltaire did the same thing. So many people throughout history have tried and have failed. And today we still see people shaking their fist. Uh, God, it's funny, we overheard a snippet of a conversation when we were on the beach yesterday, and there were two elderly gentlemen, and the one was talking about evolution and, and saying, you know, well, um, they, you know, all of this, you know, evidence for evolution, and things like this, and they said, uh, whoever they were talking about was saying, but they won't have any of it, they won't, they won't accept it, and I was thinking, yeah, that's right, because... Actually, evolution is just another faith step. It's just another belief. And actually, no, it goes against what God's Word says. And actually, when we look into what God's Word says, that starts to make more sense and holds together far better than the very patchy and nondescript and vague theories of evolution. And there are so many issues like this today. Whereas actually you look at it, um, we've seen a lot of trouble in our country today with people who want to cling to traditional values and get back to the country that it used to be. But my challenge to those people is get back to biblical values because that is what actually made the country great at that point in time if you think that it was great. Get back to biblical values, get back to see what the gospel says. That is, the, that is the challenge for every one of us. Because actually, if, if we have blessing on the side of our nation, that is powerful, that is real, and it won't, nobody can come against it. The problem is that our society has gone so far against what God says, that God has allowed us to fall into that trouble. Uh, so, you know what? We obey God and not men. And when people come against us, and when people argue against us, and people criticize us, people may call us names. People may even say, oh, you know, you're, you're not living in this century. Well, the thing is, it's not about a time thing. It's about a values thing. It's about a spiritual thing. It's about been led by the Spirit of God as to what is truth. And it has been led by the Spirit of God about what what the Scripture actually says. We go with Scripture. Because you know what? Man can change it. Man can cha change views and ideas and, and times and law. 
and that is actually a mark of the Antichrist, isn't it? That they in Dan Daniel uh, uh, chapter seven that, that they would change tongues and law. But actually, you know what? The word of God is settled in heaven. Uh, I told somebody recently, well, I believe this, and my mind is made up. And they said, oh, so there's no room for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And I was thinking, actually, I don't believe that the Holy Spirit will tell me to go against what is written in Scripture. Mm -hmm. And if they do believe that the Holy Spirit can go against what is written in Scripture, then I think they have more of an issue uh, than I probably do. And this is the thing, you might say, well, that's very arrogant of you to say that. But actually, no. Because submitting to what the Bible says, even if it's not fashionable, even if we don't like it, actually is, is not easy. And it is something that we have to lay down our own life, our own thoughts, lay down our own reputation to follow. And, you know, and we don't do it perfectly. You know, I'm the first to admit we don't follow Scripture perfectly. We don't obey God all the time. So often we're we're fighting against God and saying, Lord, why have you allowed this? Why is this happening? Why did this work out that way? Because we are natural. But actually, you know what? God is very gracious with us. And he says, no, just trust me in this. Uh, this morning I was reading about um, um, uh, Elijah and the widow and he, he has to ask her to make him a cake first before she makes one for herself. The widow of Zarephath in, uh, in 1st Kings 17. And it's interesting because she has to do that. She obeys him. But because she obeys God's word through the prophet, then the uh, barrel of meal does not waste and the cruise of oil does not fail. That's what it says. And there's provision for them both and for her son for quite a long time into the future. It looks impossible, but it was obedience to God's word. But it took faith, it took humility, it took laying down of our own life first also, it's interesting, I was reading, I was thinking about that the chapter before. You see exactly an example of what we were looking at this morning. Uh, in the chapter before it, in First, uh, first Kings uh, 16, there are five kings of Israel mentioned. And they go through them very quickly. Now, we may think that we've had a lot of uh, prime ministers in the last 20 years. We've had eight prime ministers in the last 20 years in the UK. And some of them seem to go through very quickly. Go and read um, First Kings chapter 16 and see what happened in Israel. Because they'd gone away from the biblical truth. They'd turned their back on God. And God allowed them to have, you know, five kings, one after the other. And one got rid of the other. And sometimes they murdered them. And sometimes they were murdered themselves afterwards. But very quick succession. Why? Because these things were of man. And they didn't last. I will build my empire, I will build my dynasty, and it didn't work. God promised to the house of David that he would establish the house of David in the kingdom of Judah. And you know what? It said there will not fail a man to be on the throne for the house of Judah. And there did not. Throughout the time of the kings of Judah, that was the case. But today, the Lord Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He is that remnant of the house of Judah. And God's promise has still not failed. Now to, to uh, man's view, it's like, well, you know, we, we establish our own righteousness, our own purposes, our own ideas, our own uh, theology. Fine, all well and good, but even when it's of man, it fails. And it fails miserably. But when something is of God, it is established, and it is established forever. 
and this was what uh, Gamaliel said he used to view this and uh, Judas of Galilee and he said these people they set themselves up and they claimed to be the Messiah and they had following and lots of people followed after them lots of people believed them were influenced and, and uh, went after that movement but it didn't last but the Lord Jesus Christ was different why? because he came he claimed to be the son of God he was the son of God he did miracles, he healed people he uh, transformed people's lives, he forgave sins he did all sorts of things that only the Messiah could do he opened the eyes of the blind, he had cleansed the lepers all of those people that had been forbidden to approach into the temple in the book of Leviticus you know, people like lepers, people with running sores, uh, issues of blood, uh, the blind, the halt, the maimed, the deaf, they were all forbidden to serve in the temple uh, and to approach into the throne, into the presence of God. But Jesus Christ, when he was on the earth, he went around and healed those people, transformed them, and the message was actually everyone can approach the throne of God because it's going to be by grace there's going to be no barriers there's going to be no uh, disqualification here why? because it is going to be based on what the Lord Jesus Christ himself would do what he would establish his purpose, his work, his sacrifice and that is what our salvation is based on today his payment for our sin his work on the cross, his work in our lives, his work by the Spirit today. We're still nothing, we're still nobody, we still have no power of our own, no strength. Anything we do in our own flesh, uh, anything, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, I was complaining about my job at work to my wife the other day, saying, oh, you know, this happened at work, and then, you know, thinking about it. You know, it's the work of man. So it will come to naught. It's not, we can't expect it to be this amazing spiritual uh, breakthrough when we're just in the workplace doing a man's job uh, uh, for, for a, a worldly company to earn money. You know, it, can't, it won't be a, a spiritual uh, time. It won't be anything uh, special. But actually, you know what? When we're in the kingdom of God and we're serving Him, when we're trusting him, then actually we're, we're part of something that God is doing. Whether we agree to it or not, whether we even realize we're doing it or not, God involves us in his plan and in his purpose. And it is the best thing. Wow. So, our message tonight. Yeah, we ought to obey God and not men very simple and that obedience is not like some sort of draconian oh you must obey it is just a simple submission and a simple agreeing to allow God's spirit and God's grace to accomplish in our lives what he wants to purpose and the point is we know that we will be better off if we allow him to do that God bless Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word tonight, for your purpose in our lives, for your spirit, for your truth, for all of your ways. And Lord, we just want to try to be a little obedient to your word, sensitive to your spirit, open to your plans, to establish your kingdom and your ways and your purpose and your word on the earth and to share the gospel uh, of love and grace and peace with people to forgive to heal Lord as you did Lord thank you Lord for your purpose on the earth and Lord forgive us when we are uh, against it Lord and we just pray if there's anyone out there who has never trusted Christ as their saviour and doesn't know what it's like to be forgiven to have a saviour to have certainty to have peace in the innermost man, to see truth in your word 
and to be encouraged. Lord, we pray that this would be the time when they just say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I need a saviour. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you have the power to forgive me. And I believe that your sacrifice is enough. It is sufficient. The death of someone who never sinned is sufficient to satisfy God's justice for those of us who have sinned. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you did that for us. I thank you that you came, that you were miraculous in your lifestyle, in your in your truth, in your teachings, in your purpose, and in your resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Come into my heart and be my saviour. I know there's nothing I can do towards my own salvation. And I trust wholeheartedly in what you have done for me on the cross. I thank you, Lord, now. And I want you to be my saviour in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you said that prayer for the first time, please get in touch with someone. It doesn't have to be me. Um, someone who you know who is a believer, who is a Christian, who will point you in the right direction, encourage you and help you. Okay, take care for now, God bless, and I hope to see you again soon, and uh, have a good evening.